regal and alluring. Greer Garson was once the queen of MGM. Greer Garson's coming to town. She captivated millions of fans and rallied a nation dispirited by war. Yet on screen, she seemed right at home kicking up her heels, possessed with an infectious charm and a flirtatious laugh. Sweetest, Greer Garson was the embodiment of Hollywood's romantic ideal. She had skin of ivory, those Irish green eyes. And to say her hair was red would be an understatement. It was a blazing inferno. Oh, this is very interesting. Go on. I never had the chance to meet Greer Garson, but boy, I wish I had. I'll admit, I've had a crush on her since I was 10. I found her hauntingly beautiful. And in an era when everything was much more restrained and left to the imagination, Greer Garson still steamed up the screen. She was just plain sexy. I bet if you took me in your arms, you could just about crush me to death. But she was far more than another pretty face. With an eagerness for life and a vibrant speaking voice. That was splendid. She had that undeniable spark, and she had it in spades. Greer first paid her dues on the London stage where she learned what she describes as the essentials for any actor. An expressive countenance and an uninhibited nature. Thank you for the lesson. <laughs> the rising star caught the eye of MGM mogul Louis B. Mayer. After seeing just one of her performances, he was enchanted and she was offered a studio contract. Excited for this break, Greer Garson replanted herself in Hollywood. But no rose is without its thorns. At the mature age of 33, producers were unsure of how to cast her. Cinematographers had a difficult time lighting her face. She endured a year of disappointments. But lightning would eventually strike. After Myrna Loy opted out of a seemingly small role in MGM's adaptation of the British novel Goodbye, Mr. Chips, Hello. Greer took it and got her big chance. Here I am. When her face appears on screen for the first time, it is nothing short of magical. Hello there, I thought I heard a voice. In that moment, Greer Garson immediately captured a generation. It's so nice to meet you all, and just a little terrifying. With the success of Goodbye Mr. Chips and an Oscar nomination, her career blossomed, paving the way for more exceptional leading roles. Life is dull. What news? And the brilliant summary, the answer dwells across the sea. You're a dope. Stick your tomatoes. You've got your answer. A good crack on the jaw would do you good. If that would do it, I'd love it. I'd love to look up to a man, but I don't think you hit hard enough. In her sixth film, she would forever leave her mark on cinema. In 1942, as World War II raged on, moviegoers longed for depictions of uplifting heroes, and Greer Garson met their demand. What a dumb we destroy in two hours. And thousands killed. Innocent people. Not innocent. They were against us. Women and children. And we will do the same thing here. You better not for me, Schneider. The film was Mrs. Miniver, a patriotic drama about a fearless British mother determined to keep her family safe as the turmoil of war closes in all around them. Her co-star was close friend Walter Pigeon, with whom she would co-star in nine films. British Prime Minister Winston Churchill said the film Mrs. Miniver did more for the war effort than a hundred battleships. Greer's performance is graceful and stoic, yet there is something completely accessible and vulnerable about her. Take, for instance, the scene where she must tell her son that his wife has died. Where is she? Vindy, I want you to try and get a little rest. Where is she? In your room. The house is utterly quiet. And in that extraordinary simplicity, we see Mrs. Miniver remain strong for her son. But as soon as he turns the corner, we see the great pain and heartache she has carried inside her. <laughs> the role would win her an Academy Award. And for many fans, they believe it's Greer Garson's crowning achievement. But I have to say that her next film, Random Harvest, 
is my personal favorite. You're staring at me, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. It struck me. Your hair is bright red in the sunshine. What I wouldn't give to have been Ronald Coleman for just a moment and have Greer Garson look at me that way. He serves as the intellectual essence of the story, and Greer is the heart. It all culminates in the final scene, where Ronald Coleman finds his way back to their house. They realize all the years they've lost, but are overjoyed with hope for the future. It gets me every time. Greer Garson became the number one box office draw among dramatic actresses, which firmly placed her among the pantheon of greats like Betty Davis and Katharine Hepburn. After the war, America's taste in movies changed. But Greer held steadfast, despite a string of less than successful films. She had a saying, when you can't wait for your ship to come in, you've got to row out to it. And it was this relentless drive that would lead to a career resurgence. Greer Garson would triumphantly re-emerge on the big screen late in her 60s with films like The Singing Nun and Sunrise at Campobello, for which she would receive her seventh and final Academy Award nomination for her astonishing transformation into Eleanor Roosevelt. I have the naive point of view that in public service one should pursue principles without calculating the consequences. To me, there will never be another Greer Garson. She's as rare as they come. She was matchless, elegant, and real. For Turner Classic Movies, I'm Keith Carradine. Greer Garson's Eleanor Roosevelt is at FDR's side as he fights to walk into politics again in Sunrise at Camp.